So this is the big reveal because I haven't even announced this to anybody but my friends and people who work on the album. <laughs> Patterns and Static is the name of the album, and I wanted to make an album that loosely was like a biography to me growing up, listening to different forms of like hip hop, because I've always been a big like fan of hip hop. So I would say uh, it's mainly about that storyline of feeling like I was raised by the TV. A lot of my album was revolving around this idea I had for like, so when I was a kid, I thought, when I die, I'm gonna go to heaven, this white room, and I'm gonna get the TV put in front of me, and I get to like watch my life played back so I can learn from it more. And so that was like kind of like a concept I was rolling with for my album loosely. And so I was like, well, the TV's a big part of it. I felt like I was quote unquote raised by the TV just because I would always be watching TV with my dad and stuff. And so I was like, I gotta have a TV theme for the album. And then it was just like, you know what? I'm gonna make TVMA the persona. That's the whole thing. <laughs> when I'm not rapping and making music and stuff, I'm totally driving delivery all the time and I have to start the order myself. So that's what we're doing. So let's get it. Funny enough, I wrote most of the lyrics of my album when I was driving, so I figured I could just uh, kind of show you what that process is like. <laughs> I, I would call it alternative hip-hop. It is it is predominantly hip-hop, but there's a lot of influence from indie rock to psychedelic rap and hip-hop, or rap and rock influences, and, it, and a lot of that's because of the people who helped me make it. And there's like jazz, gospel, uh, straight up like pop. Like there's a lot of different sounds all over my stuff. One part of my album that I really thought was important, I'm talking about just like mental health and stuff. And sort of just like reclaiming what people would consider like mental illnesses and stuff. And uh, so I got a song, it's, it's quite ridiculous. It's called Mental Trillness. <laughs> and what I wanted to do was uh, embody like a, kind of like a manic episode like when you're at like a manic high and then you hit a manic low and there's like moments like that all over my album but uh, since I like wrote most of my album in the car like lyric wise and flow wise I figured I'd drive around and show you what I'm talking about Put it on my beat, all you anxious motherfuckers get down Drown out the sound of your problems right now Let's get it, put the rain clouds, but the sun's out Lighting up a rainbow like you're crazy again right now The blood on my mind, I got left Don't know how much time I got left Left bill, get right, step right, I get left Not you, be you, don't work your damn self to death Who's the titty with the committee? Why they let the crazy talk just run the city? And it's an FM transmitter, so it does that all the time <laughs> This is what a work shift is like for me at one point, I believe it. So sad, so anxious. I'm your puppet, I repeat it. That's me. Oh, I ain't shit. At one point, I believe it. So sad, so anxious. I'm your puppet, I repeat it. I also, by the way, have to. I'm in the mixing stages of my album. So. Um, Joe Hagen is uh, mixing it. He also recorded it and all of that stuff. And so I have to give him mixing notes from like all different places. So I listen to it in different places, like headphones. I listen to it with headphones. I listen to it on some like speakers, uh, studio speakers, and I also do a car test since I'm always in the car. I always tell him like how it sounds on good speakers, bad speakers, all of that, but... <laughs> I was just about to call Joe, Joe Hagen, the producer, mixer, recording engineer, and featured artist on my album, so yeah. Come on, Joe. Sleepy Joe. I'm just playing. What up? What up, what up bro? 
How you doing? <laughs> good, good. What are you doing right now? I'm just sitting on a balcony, hanging out. That's what's up. I gotta break you some crazy news, bro. I got hit with this beat, okay? And I realized this is the fucking last song, bro. <laughs> so I had to throw this on you that Thane Coleman remixed that Jeremiah sample, the one he sent me. And Thane Coleman, he he ripped that shit up. Like, he, he made this dope thing. And I was, like, gonna do that uh, intro song where I was gonna, like, leak it before the album. And it's, like, it's called Static was it what it was. But this shit was so in line with the vision that, like, I was trying to do for, like, the final thing that I'm, I'm calling the song Patterns and Static, bro. <laughs> that's the title track? That's the title track, and it's gonna be the last song. Yeah, that's too bad. I was high for, like, ten days. Colors dancing in shades, flying every which way. The energy in zone, felt infinity at home. Oh, when I wasn't alone, synchronicity in song. Settled on, writing poems, singing, bring the trinity along. Long as all I've ever known, till I turn the TV on. <laughs> And Joe Hagen, who um, was in, like, After Judo is his band, too. I manage After Judo, and he eventually was like, all right, now you've done all this stuff for us. Let's make your album now. And I was like, all right, let's do it. I really just want to reach somebody who is going through the stuff that I was like before I met Gambino. I felt like he kind of pulled me out of a creative rut that I didn't know I was in when I was in high school. And it's, he's helped me throughout my life. But Gambino, there's a lot of like Kanye, the mad artist, uh, you know, stereotype of like crazy artist man. Like that's, I have a lot of that in my music. I'm usually like around the process of music, but also in different ways. Like I do some videography work for uh, Israel Naor. I've been working on some projects with him. TVMA is an adventure. You never know, you're not gonna get the same day. Um, it really depends on what the vibe is, but he does a good job of setting that and kind of feeding off of everybody else's energy in the room um, to kind of create something just amazing, spectacular. And, and he just brings, a set of creativity and sometimes it's you're just sitting there just watching him go and, and when he finally kind of locks in and, you know, and, and hits the creative spot for that moment um, it's just it's really cool to see um, and it makes it a lot of fun to, to work with Speaking of like the kind of music that I've always loved and speaking to my heart really. The, I learned uh, in high school, so Melissa Fight Johnson, that's the, the OG, they, was my English teacher. She taught me how to uh, really analyze like a text and we got really into it in her class and we had these dialectical journals and we would take notes on like what this could mean in regards to the story, you know, like the blue curtain theory type, type of stuff. <laughs> but now like, ever since I graduated, me and her husband and her are like, we're like homies. Like we can like hang out and they come to Wichita and sometimes to visit. And I shouted them out of my album. <laughs> 
she's also from Pittsburgh and spent most of her life there. And and that's where I'm from, Pittsburgh, Kansas. So she's able to like, really you know, talk to me back and forth about the vibe of that town. It's a crazy town. Like there's a lot of almost like nepotism or whatever, you know. You usually only get hired certain places if you have like a family name. And like if you don't have like one of those names that's like wealthy in Pittsburgh, a lot of the business owners and stuff, they're like really like gossipy, small town type people. And they like, it's a weird toxic like culture kind of. But you can't really get into their circles <laughs> of like these like bigger business places. Like, I don't know, it's a really clicky type of place. I'd love to explore my horizons by, I want to release as much stuff as I can in Wichita, and especially in 2021. And then I want to go to a bigger city just to throw myself into it, meet as many cool artists as possible. And I'm, I'm really excited for that too, because while I do love Wichita, it's like a hometown to me. Um, even though I'm from Pittsburgh, Kansas, but it's like it is like a hometown to me, because that's where I found myself as an artist. I I do want to explore like a, a like a, something that's like called an art city at some point so yeah that's the ideal situation like, hopefully i'm making music doing videos uh, acting again but in a different place for a while until i get older or whatever whenever i decide to come back i'll be back four months later <laughs> yo it's tvma you already know that but uh Yo, I just wanted to say, I feel like a different person in the sense that four months have passed, okay? I got the new, new glasses, no longer the broken ass glasses ass rapper that I used to be. So I wanted to just like wear this to this interview, because this is the TVMA shirt, but that's how it started. I wanted to run the whole album with this shirt, just every visual aspect had this shirt on it. Very Gambino-esque, not gonna lie. But that's kind of why I, I switched it up, and I'm still going with the floral patterns. But, uh, and that's gonna be like TV in May, everywhere. Cause you know, I just got bored with just wearing the same shirt all the time, doing the shows with the same shirt, doing all the videos with the same shirt, but I'm gonna incorporate the shirt as much as possible. So, you know, that's why I had to do this today. A little throwback, if you will. <laughs> so yeah, the single, the one is out. Finally, first single. Some promo videos for the single out. Those are fire. We shot some shit right over here in this yard. <laughs> I initially came up with it, I just envisioned myself kind of just like laying in the yard and I see there's a TV, like I, I, it's kind of like I hear music and I'm like what the hell is that? I lean up and there's a TV there and that's how I wanted to introduce the world, the visual world of patterns and static. But it ended up like, like it kind of was like, it melded with another promo idea where I'm laying in the grass listening to some music. And then I was like, all right, let's just do this. And then we're going to make it hella weird because I got to, you know, because <laughs> that's just who I am. Hey, yo, this is Brad. And despite what he wants you to believe, this video is not about him. But he says hi. All right, here's me training for my latest video, Mental Trillness. Son of a bitch. His pants came off. I didn't expect his pants to come off. <laughs> the big thing is just, just if you're an artist and you feel like, or if you think, or if you want to be an artist, and you feel like you have a lot of ideas to share to the world, like the world needs as much creativity as possible. Like everybody's creative in their own ways. So please just do, do what you feel like you're made to do. Even if something's holding you back, like it's the town you're in or whatever, like, it's really yourself most of the time. TPC they got me kept to fake the whole plan. It's a stare in my eyes and Tracy fat as a stat. It said the TV's on, let it go, get rabbit. So stare in my eyes and Tracy patterns and